Hello my SOC universe and welcome to the review of the midweek action in Spain, in France and in Portugal. Biggest news, the biggest one that uh, I think gets too little credit, but I'm wearing Sporting. Sporting winning their first title in Portugal, uh, league title in 19 years. Has been a long time waiting and I think it's always underappreciated what a, a, a big team Sporting is within Portugal. But also has to say the supply line that they uh, had. I mean, most of the players that won the European Champ Championship came through the Sporting Academy. So, uh, simply for that reason, they are a huge team. And so I decided they need to be given the credit. And since there was an only cup action, I actually put a little bit more Portugal here and uh, got rid of the fr uh, most of the French jerseys for now, which is only temporarily. Lots of French jerseys coming my way. I think by the end of this month I might as well have as many French as uh, Spanish league jerseys. So I'm very, very excited about that. I also decided to change it up a little bit and really go whoever played away from home. So we have away jerseys for Real Madrid, Barcelona and Valencia here, which actually makes things a whole lot more interesting. And there are two away <laughs> jerseys here too. A lot of away jerseys. It makes it interesting. Uh, so I told you about sporting. Um, French Cup, we have a, a PSG against Monaco final, however, not as straightforward, especially for one of those teams, as it probably sure should have been. And I think internationally, the biggest one is uh, Barcelona seemingly has an allergy for first place. They just don't want to take this first place. And because of that, they are gifting the title more or less to Madrid. Which Madrid team remains to be seen? Seen, but I think things are very much pointing towards these guys. Also, relegation uh, seems a little bit settled in Spain. Has a lot to do with the uh, remaining games to be played. Uh, I will focus now in this video only on the league races because that's what I saw. Uh, it was just too much compressed into few, few and too little time to make up. Even if I took the day off today. Uh, not for me, the video making of obviously, it's too little to uh, catch up on everything. And so, yeah, uh, I just want to point out Alaves beating Elche, uh, basically putting Elche in trouble. And then we had already Levante against Barcelona, a game that Barca completely had in the bag at halftime. Messi and Pedri getting the first two goals, but that game was just settled. Barcelona dominated that game and I, I mean I didn't uh, watch it I just saw um, the scores and and so I was, uh, and you know at, at the 10 o'clock kick it was uh, uh, just killer and I really thought yeah uh, it's easy personal bar, 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 so tum, tum, tum. and I watched the hell this morning they said yeah and it all changed in the second half and it probably had a lot to do with Arusha coming off and Robert, Sergio Roberto being and played out of position, uh, changing uh, things on the back. And suddenly Barcelona completely lost the hold of the game. And it took only three minutes for Levante to equalize. 57th to the 59th and it's 2-2. Two, two. And for the second goal, yes, there is his goal to Roger Mati, but this was a lazy pass played out by Lionel Messi. Uh, if your star players don't show up, and that's the one thing, uh, this Barca squad is clearly to me the most talented of all the squads in La Liga. Even with all the uh, crap going around at, at, at the beginning of the season, the most quality is in this squad. But there's so much character missing. Uh, this is a team that lost in Rome, that lost in Liverpool, uh, that had threw away last year's league title, lost to Bayern and, and so on. There is something wrong with the mentality of Barcelona. And if you look at it, the squad itself is not that bad. But there is some guy missing. I heard that Frankie de Jong should be given the reins of the team. So let's see. However, I also have a little bit of courage they showed because uh, in the 64th, Usman Dembele with a great shot makes it 3-2, but they catch us kind of hang on. And Leon in the 83rd gets the equalizer and the film familiar, familiar scene, Messi looking dejected. This to me becomes a defining picture of Messi. Uh, his 
mismanagement of his later car uh, career by Barcelona and also that he's missing uh, true leadership within Barcelona. 3-3. Three, three. At that point, we didn't even know how the other games uh, were, were played, but you had definitely had the feeling that Barcelona was out of the title race. They could have gone top, albeit with a game more. They don't do it. Advantage. Madrid at that point. Um, so you Valencia would have been a big game. It's a one nil win. Didn't see anything. Celta Vigo beaten Getafe. Getafe not quite out of trouble, but probably Huesca with a, a win against Bilbao that actually uh, may or um, may see them being saved in the end, which would be kind of huge. And then so most of Atletico Madrid against Real Sociedad. Ah. Uh, Pretty impressive stuff by Atleti Atletico Madrid. I think of all the, t uh, the three teams that are remaining in this title race, I have to I have to say um, over the past few, it is definitely Atletico Madrid that uh, look the strongest, the most cohesive team. And uh, Carrasco and Correa are scoring two wonderfully played games. Marcus Llorente assisting one, Luis Suarez. Um, assisting the Correa goal. Uh, Luis Suarez probably, sh he lost his scoring boost because he should have scored, scored a few more. Uh, late on in the game, Real Sociedad then was pressing to get it because I think they hit once the crawl cross, but before, before, before they got the uh, goal through Zubeldia. But then I really thought that Atletico dug in and got the result. And that's the biggest compliment I can make for them. Uh, they really looked well. And I would be so happy if they become the next Spanish champions. Uh, we'll see about the chances. Um, Valladolid beating, uh, uh, losing at home to, 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 to Villarreal puts Valladolid in trouble. And I say it again, I think Valladolid is one of the teams that would be in my ideal uh, La Liga. Uh, definitely over teams like Getafe or Eibar for sure. Uh, Eibar playing a 1-1 against uh, Betis, also a credible re result. And then Granada, Real Madrid. Um, I was a little bit hoping a Real Madrid draw, draw, draw in points as well, and the game took a similar turn as the Barcelona game. Yes, Real Madrid uh, had a 2 0 lead at the half. A uh, great uh, goal by Mo Modric, Rodrigo getting uh, a second one. And uh, Real Madrid having chances, really owning uh, Granada for most of the time. But then Granada comes back in, into the game and they get a goal back in the seventh and the first. And uh, at that point, they had uh, enough chances that you thought maybe there is an equalizer in there. But then uh, a few minutes after the 1 2 order a solo, and then Karim Ponsama. Uh, make it 4-1 resounding victory and it is now a two-way race uh, between the Madrid teams for, for a title. That win actually means that Real Madrid only needs only needs to win out and Atleti needs to drop points at one uh, stage. But still, at this point, and we look at the schedule a little bit, Atletico has on paper the easiest schedule, 83% chance of winning the title is pretty big, Real Madrid 14, Barcelona with only an outside chance, I don't see Barcelona winning this title at all. Um, we know already Europa League and Conference League spots, there are still a uh, fight between Rasada Villarreal and Betis. And as I said, on the bottom, that win of Huesca pulled Huesca out of trouble. They have now a two-point cushion over Valladolid, who def uh, desperately needs the game. And Valladolid has an absolute horrible schedule. Uh, Elche and Eibar uh, are down there at 30, 30 points. But it has to be noted, it's a 30, 30 points. There's a lot of points being up, being pick, picked up uh, by those teams. As for expectations, it is Atletico Madrid really for for front control. Uh, Given that Barcelona also has a rather easier schedule, for Real Madrid it's really the one, uh, the Bilbao game, that can make or break uh, things. There might be a chance that Barcelona could go Real Madrid, but I think it will end one, two, three, as it is here. And uh, for for the bottom, same same thing. We already know which teams will go into the um, European competitions. Next round, all played. As of now, all played on Sunday at 6.30. Uh, this is how it stands. I am not 100% if this will stay, stay this way, but this is uh, the big one is Athletic Club against Real Madrid because you one would think that Atletico will win against Osasuna and Barcelona against Celta Vigo. As for going down, Valladolid has to go to Real Sociedad. Not an easy, easy one. Huesca at Real Bet is also not uh, for conclusion. Elche card is, is young. Yeah. 
you see already, it is not easy to get out of there. And I want to actually uh, also put up the last last round to really see the, uh, the run in Barcelona would have an easy away game at A bar, but it doesn't help because they're really not that much in the title race anymore. Atletico at Valladolid, that could be a meaningful game for Valladolid that they might, uh, must win. Ramadit at home to Villarreal, not an easy game, but it's right before the Europa Cup final. So I don't think Villarreal will give it their own, their all. So, um, Maybe the chances are a little bit tighter than the model predicts it. Moving on to France, we had two semi-finals in the French Cup. PSG should have won that game by a whole lot. They had so many chances. Mbappé scoring two goals putting uh, in the 10th and the 50th. 50th, 50th. Um, also being uh, in injured at one point by, by playing on. But it has to be said, Montpellier, the two or three chances that uh, they were ruthless and Laborde with a Great goal, and equals it just before for the even and eighty third uh, Delors making it two two. Absolutely not, absolutely not deserved two with two. To be honest, uh, Icardi having huge chance towards the end of, of the game. We go straight to uh, to um, penalties. There was no overtime, which is something have been completely missing for the entire Fra uh, French Cup competition that they didn't play overtime, which is a smart thing to do. Really smart thing to do in these times. Um, and the penalty shootout, uh, all PSG. Players convert, it went 5 5. And then uh, Zambia for Montpellier misses, and Kain, Moise Ken, Kain, Moise Ken converts it, and PSG is on to the final. Uh, Monaco was a little scared in the 20th minute. Peugeot makes it uh, 1 0 for Rumilly Vallier. Uh, but then, in 77 minutes later, Boson scores an own goal from that moment on. Uh, there was no resistance there in, in, anywhere for Monaco. Uh, too many just before the half makes it 2-1, uh, two, two I think. Folland misses uh, a big, big chance where uh, from close range he, he, he puts it on the bar. Uh, ben Yeda in the 55th with a nice dink makes it 3-1. Uh, and then Fabregas and Golovin. At more final will be played next Wednesday at 9.15, should be an interesting one. Which leads us now straight to Portugal. I gave you already in my Tuesday video uh, the first few results. The biggest one is Sporting beating Boavista 1-0. Everyone knew if Sporting wins that game, they're champions. And there was a nervous energy to that game. A whole lot of nervous energy. Sporting missing quite a few chances until Paulinho finally makes it 1 0. And then in the second half, um, you just didn't want to concede, but you don't want to go all out and you don't want to catch a goal, you just want to, want to, want, want to play it at home. If you watch the highlights, I watched a little bit of the game, there was, it was so nerve wracking in a way. They just wanted to get it all because you don't want to go uh, into the Lisbon derby not having secured the title. Sporting hangs on, ends the drought, huge celebrations, a uh, big title party, and as, as I said, I'm proudly wearing Sporting. Not only, I think Sporting is probably pro my favorite team in Portugal, I would say. Uh, they're not one of the big, 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 big ones, but I also have to say, with all the Portuguese jerseys, I really like the Sporting jersey. The long, the long sleeve, it's just a beauty. Um, so, with that table, Sporting clear, Porto also relatively clear on the second uh, cha cha Champions League spot where Benfica uh, has to go into qualification. And on the bottom, Boa Vista, not looking good. Not looking, not looking might go in a relegation playoff, uh, which is also where they're projected in the expected uh, standings. Up top, everything pretty much clear in Portugal. Uh, and in the next round, we have the Lisbon derby between Benfica and Sporting, which will be just celebration for Sporting. They still have not lost a game in the league, so it will be interesting if they can go through through a derby unbeaten as well. In any case, that was it from me uh, for this midweek. As, as, as I said, I will uh, try to do um, one month. The videos will be again Germany and Austria and then um, England and the Netherlands to wrap that one up and we'll go to uh, the Western Europe and Italy on Tuesday. That's at least my plan for now. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, drop a line below if you want to add something to what I've said in, the, in, in this video. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists uh, that you might give interest to you too. 
Also, please consider subscribing to my uh, channel to give you all the updates, all the things that rotate in my soccer universe. And with that, have a great day. Thank you.